In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to calculate the area under the curve for Bicon Nexus motion capture data uh, using the force plates uh, using only the FZ. So we had people do a vertical jump on a force plate, Vertec force plate, captured at a thousand hertz, and we are interested in getting the uh, impulse from that. So we're integrating the force with respect to time here. Okay, so yours may not look exactly like this, but the only important things are FZ, and I, as you just saw, I created this time column here. That's pretty much all we'll need. So beyond that, we'll be doing a couple things. Let's now scatter plot this to see what it looks like. And yours may not look exactly like mine. All right, looks like the jump occurred somewhere around 11 seconds here, and they're off the force plate here. They landed, and then they are now off the force plate again. Someone just didn't hit stop. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna chop off a good portion of this. We're gonna chop off up to about eight, nine seconds. So before I do that, I'm going to scroll on down until it reaches zero for the first time important thing with that is we want to chop off any time that the person is off the force plate from the jump. We don't care what happens after the jump. We're not going to use any of that data. So we'll just, I found it here, and we'll just insert two rows so that this is the only thing here. Great. And then, as I said, I'm going to chop off a good portion, about nine seconds. And this is in sec. 2.666 seconds there. So I'm going to chop off a good nine seconds just because I don't want to have to scroll through a lot of stuff forever and ever as we're doing this tutorial. So we'll chop all that off. That's okay. Make sure you come to 2A and just type zero. That'll reset everything. Let's scatter plot that again. See what that looks like. All right, that's much more manageable. Actually, yeah, okay, great. So the time of the jump start was about just after two and a half seconds. So we're going to identify now, I'm going to start from the bottom, it'll be a little bit quicker, when the jump occurred. Okay, so we start seeing this change a lot from the standard 7.2, 72, 7.24 point yada yada yada, and then it's going down, and then it's coming back up. That tells us that that person is moving at that point. Let's cut it off right about here. Insert 2. And one more thing I want to do before that is I'm going to get this person's weight. And that's going to be in Newtons. Weight in Newtons. We're just going to take an average value of that force. So it's only taking into account stuff that was before the movement here. Great. Now we're going to come on back down here, and we're just going to do this one minus this one. Great. And come back up here and add some dollar signs in here. That'll make it so that that is always pointing to that cell and column, essentially row and column. Then apply it throughout, and it should be great. Got it here, all the way through, so we can see it being negative, 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 and then becoming positive, 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 perfect. So that's our difference, and now we're going to do the impulse here. So we start one row below, types equals to this one, sorry, this one plus this one, divided by two, and then multiply that by the time difference. Great. And then you can apply that one throughout. Excellent. Let's come back up here to the top. And we'll type in the impulse here. And that's going to be 
in Newton seconds. All we have to do, since we just got all the little tiny minute differences, we'll just sum that on up. Perfect, 219 Newton seconds. Now, we want to do a couple things with this. We want to find stuff like the velocity. We want to find also the work, power, kinetic energy, and all that. So, let's do a couple things. Let's do velocity, and that's going to be in meters per second. It's going to be equal to impulse divided by, we've got to get the person's mass, so we'll take this weight and divide it by 9.81. You remember F equals MA, that's all we're doing there. And that gets us velocity 2.95 meters per second. Perfect, and now we want to do power. Power, that's in watts. And that's just equal to the velocity times the impulse. 648 watts generate at takeoff, essentially. So that's the takeoff velocity, takeoff power. And then how much work from there. Okay, work. So now we need to do it with respect to time. We're going to multiply by the time difference. Alright. Equals to power times the time difference. So start of movement. All right, sorry, end of movement here. And then the start of movement, which we have here. And I just forgot to add in my parenthesis, it did it for me, so I'll hit yes. And the number should be more or less comparable to the power, maybe a little bit lower, depends on how big the time differential is. This one was a little bit less than a second, so that's why it's just below it. And then we also want to do um, kinetic energy. This one will require just a bit more work. Alright, so we're going to use the velocity and we'll use the person's mass so equals to one half times person's weight, sorry, mass, divided by 9.81, and then multiply that by their velocity squared. Great, 324. And then lastly, let's get some heights here. So we got kinetic energy. All we have to do now is divide it by their force, essentially. Take this, divide it by this. All right, so this gives us a height in meters that they jumped. And let's get it in centimeters. So it equals 2 times 100, so 44 centimeters. And lastly, let's do inches just for good measure. Divided by 2.54. Alright, so about 17 inches. Alright, so that concludes this. That gets you everything. Uh, does require a little bit more setup, a little bit more work at the start. But uh, if you have any questions, please contact your lab instructor. Otherwise, um, or you can contact me as well. But don't forget to turn this in with your lab report. Otherwise, um, see you in the next video.